Bist du ready? Nein. <lacht> Gehen wir dann? Okay, zuerst das Auto fahren lassen und dann sind wir ready. <lacht> Nein, eigentlich immer noch nicht. <lacht> genau. Day one. Our goal for the first day was clear. We had to reach the camping in Saint Legier. We started from Lars's home with our backpacks, tents, camping gear and food. And we had 60 kilometers in front of us. We didn't try out our gear before. We just started in the adventure and saw how it went by then. The landscape around Lars's hometown was beautiful. Open land, growing crops and winding roads going up and down small hills. It was a pleasure to ride an almost flat ground for a while. The pleasure soon ended. We soon found ourselves climbing up to reach the first pass. We took on 500 meters of height difference in a relatively small amount of time. The Jura Plateau was still nowhere in sight, but we felt we were getting closer. After a short but fun descent, we reached Cool. We took a small break to fill up our water bottles and found a pump track on the side of the road. Useless to say, we took our time there. Back on the road, I spent more time looking at Lars' so-called cool thighs than what I'd like to admit. Mm, the overshankle. We pedaled further and found our spot to have lunch, a gas station. After a healthy salad and some less healthy beverages, we took on another ride up to Bellile, where the countrywide famous cheese Tet de Moine is produced. The Bellile convent was closed and the water fountain outside was dry. So we set on to go further and find somewhere to fill up our water stocks again. We struggled a little bit to ride up an off-road path, but were rewarded when we came out at the top. Only a couple of kilometers were left to our goal. Open fields and some Jura forest accompanied us to the camping. The saint Legier camping is immersed in the nature of the woods on the side of the village. We checked in, and at that point we just had to build our tents go grocery shopping, cook our dinner, and enjoy your night there. We did it! On the second day, we woke up with a literal pain in the ass. I was not used to cycling with a heavy backpack for hours, so we decided to take a rest day and visit saint Legier's surroundings. There are two small lakes in the region, so we paid a visit to the Etang de Roi and the Etang de la Gruyère, as well as a ride around the open land of the Jura Plateau.
On day three, we woke up surprised by a gray sky and didn't want to get all of our biking equipment wet for the remaining three days. So we took a train to Le Locle and did some cultural activities there. Yeah, look more was Deutsch. Rolex. We visited the underground mills and were really surprised by that. How could someone in the 17th hundred think about building a mill in a cave and even building a sawmill to repair the gears over time? Two of the mills were repaired for show, but originally there were five in the cave. This bad boy can fit so many wheels in it. After coming out of the cave, we still had half a day to do stuff. So we took a train, another one, to Le Brené to take a ride on a ship on the border between Switzerland and France and to go visit the waterfall, Le Saut de Doux. On the next day, the rain didn't want to stop, but we didn't want our holidays ruined by some inconveniently placed pissing clouds. So we dragged ourselves out of the tents and went for a ride down to the river Du and back alongside it. Come in, come in, I can sit you by the fire. Listen, listen. There's something I must confide I know I said that it'd be fine I know I made it look like it'd be alright But I think I learned my lesson And I'm not gonna let you out of my sight You can call me killer Cause I'll bring you to the light And it might taste bitter
Day 5, or last day as we like to call it, was the day it pissed the most on us. We tried to pack our tents as carefully as possible, but why? We surely had to unpack them again in the evening to dry them. Compared to day one, we took another route, going through Delimon. We really weren't that motivated, but we both wanted to get home and take a warm shower, so we pushed on to reach our goal. But logically, after a coffee break, I speak Italian after all. I didn't film a lot on that day, mainly because I wanted to get home quickly. I guess Lars felt the same as I did, because we pulled an average of 27 km per hour on this trip. It might not look like a lot, but it's a lot for us. Getting closer to Delimont, I had a problem with my chain. Using a soft gear ratio, I could only pedal a certain amount before it getting stuck again. We decided to take a shortcut and take the train to the closest station to home, which left us about 10 km on almost flat terrain. <laughs> Before the video ends, I wanted to thank Lars for motivating this little piece of shit to take on such an adventure with him. I probably wouldn't have done something like this without a travel buddy like you. Thanks Lars.